how good is Andy Cruz? So for his pro debut, it was a pretty incredible fight. A lot of really cool stuff. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of his skills, some of the things that he does well, and talk about some of the ways that he can kind of improve. Uh, obviously, this is only his first fight. So first thing we're going to look at, very common source of offense, jab, 1-1-2. One, one, okay. Now, this being his most common form of offense means that he's going to open up a lot of sequences with a stepping jab here, stepping jab here. Now, watch this right here, stepping jab or stepping right hand, okay? This little pattern here is going to be the reason why he didn't get the knockout in the fight is because he has to open up with a step on his left leg, okay? We're going to continue taking a look and talk about some of these ideas. Getting on the line here, really, really cool move, okay? So he gets to the line. And he's checking the line. His opponent's controlling him here. He's going to move to the line to get controlled again. And he's going to slip that and throw a jab to the body. Nice craft right there. Uh, real quick, just want to point out, stepping jab to the body. Okay, uh, You're almost always going to throw that one as a stepping jab anyway. Uh, no big deal. But I do want to point out those con very common patterns. Okay, Now, coming forward, stepping jab here. Okay, Again, getting off the line of his opponent's jab again, timing that control. And now he's going to immediately block a possible right hand from his opponent, and then throw another right hand. Very, very cool little trick. Um, and this is very, very important that we find a way to layer our offense, okay? He had previously opened up with the jab to the body, and now he's going to follow it up by continuing the sequence, okay? Um, understanding that, oh, last time the pattern went this way, I'm just going to continue it um, uh, and and get more value out of the 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 immense amount of effort it takes me to get on the line with my opponent. Okay, so uh, really, really cool stuff so far. Now, we're going to talk about this. Very, very, very important, okay? This dude is jacked. You guys see his back? You see how strong he is? You see his core? He, incredible. But look at this little chicken leg right here, okay? He's got these little chicken legs because he doesn't use his feet correctly. It's a very, very common problem in the amateurs, especially because they don't really transfer their weight from one leg to the other all that much. They're usually kind of standing in the line, right, their head in the middle. Now, Andy Cruz is mostly like that. But watch him try to attempt some down, up, down. And again, he's not really catching his weight correctly here because he doesn't use his the balls of his feet and his heels correctly or in tandem. He doesn't have the correct structure, right, to hold himself and be doing this super, super, super athletic stuff that he's doing here. Now, we're going to see him not fail and do some stuff, but I just wanted to point out that um, that's the reason why he's falling there. Now, beautiful move here. Beautiful, beautiful pull counter. Now, most of the time when people think pull counter, they think that weird thing Mayweather does where he gets on the line here. And then as soon as the punch comes, he's going to move his head straight back this way and then move his head back onto the line here. But notice Cruz goes down, okay? He's pulling his weight down to the ground, okay? Real quick, if you guys want to learn more about two-foot punching and learning what correct footwork structure and footwork patterns, um, and you want to learn the things that, that Andy Cruz is not doing correctly with his feet, uh, check out the Valtz Boxing Combat System. It's going to teach you how to do this pull counter here. Very, very common source of offense. It's going to teach you the best ways to train that in what I call the track drill, the best way to understand your relationship between your opponent, what side of the line you're on, um, uh, the, be, the relationship between you and your opponent, what side of the line you're on, um, and how to get across the line. Okay, very, very, very important stuff. But the jab comes, he pulls, gets his weight to the ground, down. Now he's going to drive up. Beautiful. Crosses the line with the right hand, and now he's following it up a little bit with the left hand. Uh, the left hook here. Now, if we take a look at his footwork structure, again, it's not great. He's not really getting very much weight into it, mostly arm punches, because he got the little chicken legs. Okay, he's got the little chicken legs. If he understood what to do with his weight more correctly, he wouldn't have chicken legs. He would be training the things correctly, um, and he would build strength in the correct areas of his legs as well. Okay, so again, it's like a, like a whole corrective process um, and, and an understanding of the development. And again, because he got the little chicken legs, you can tell he's just not doing it correctly. Off the line here. Now, real quick, okay? Again, when we talk about strategy, we talk about theory, okay? One of the big problems uh, is most of his openings, right? He's moving off the line one, one. His opponent takes a step. He's throwing the two. He gets off the, the line from the two. Now, real quick, Mr. Burgos here. This was, look at how, I want to say open, Cruz is here. 
but he's not open, right? He understands what's coming in this moment because he sees it coming a mile away, right? Everyone saw this one one two coming a mile away. And here's the thing, right? And we talk. Uh, I want you to hold on to that idea as we move through the film study. But watch him re-enter the line after he exits the line. Boop. And now he's going to re-enter the line with the left hand. One, one, two. Okay, again, this is a very, very, very common pattern in his repertoire. He practices one, one, twos all day on the bag. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. Stepping and moving with each punch. Um, but because of the fact that he can't just re-enter the line all the time with the right hand, um, or I want to say rather use probing punches to get on the line, okay? A lot of stepping punches. Now, real quick, this is beautiful. Okay, look at him on the front foot. The jab comes. He slips to the front foot, down, up, into a one-two. Beautiful. You don't see very many fighters slipping to the front foot, down, and then coming up with a punch like this, right? I call this the front foot pull counter, okay? In boxing, I teach two pull counters, one toward the back foot, and then one on the front foot. And uh, if you want to learn the easiest ways to practice these ideas so that you can fight on either side of the line, uh, check out the Feltz Boxing Combat System. Really, really clever because if your opponent always knows where you're going, right? Say he slips to the back foot and the guy throws a one-two right there. Say he threw a one-two, but now he's not he's not moving his weight toward the where the right hand was going to go. He slipped to the front foot instead, right? Now the guy's going to be in Narnia, but he winds up you know owning him anyway. But anyway, more important, being able to fight on both sides of the line, right, is one of the, the precursors to understanding how to open up on the line um, with more than just, I'll say, a stepping jab, right? Being able to attack from this position here, right? Now, he's attacking with the left cross first before the right hand um, instead of just being able to do a right hand probe. Uh, but anyway, uh, really, really slick move. I thought that was a really cool move. One, two, okay? And I want to point out, I thought this sequence was particularly cool, okay? Because he's going to get on the line, stepping jab to the body, throws the two. The guy sees it coming a mile away. Again, we're just coming back to what I was saying a second ago. When you always have to open up with the one, one, two, or you always have to open up with the one, two, like Manny Pacquiao, it makes those punches more predictable, even though the guy still might be fast enough to hit you, right? Like, I think this two is still landing, right? But the guy is seeing seeing it coming enough to pull enough weight away from it, but also that he's not getting surprised. He's not getting smacked super hard. And this is one of the reasons why Andy Cruz had such a hard time being able to hurt Burgos and why he couldn't stop him because Burgos could see everything that he was doing coming a mile away. He knew what it was going to, what it was going to be, whether it landed or not. Now, beautiful move here. He gets the line, boom, throws a two, immediately gets his block up. He defends his position here. Okay, just in case a counter came, he's ready. Oh, nothing. And then he's right back on attacking. Um, and then again, looking to guard the line from the side of the line of his opponent's weight. Right. So beautiful, beautiful work here from uh, Andy Cruz. A lot of really, really cool stuff in here from him. Now, stepping, stepping, two. Okay, he lands this punch-ish. One, one, one. And again, look at how easily he fainted this guy to the body. Look at how he easily he got his hands down. He's landing this punch, but Burgos is still pulling so much of his weight away from it that he's not really getting any value, right? He's He just exerted all this energy. And look at Burgos. Let's just watch Burgos throughout this sequence here, okay? Did he really do all that much? He didn't use any energy, right? It was, it was nothing to him. A guy with 45 professional fights, right? A bunch of losses, right? It's not like this was this was not like an easy fight, right? It it was it was still like you know I don't want to say like a cherry or nothing, you know. But this guy is not like it's not like fighting, getting in there and having to fight Tifimo Lopez or fighting like Cambosis, right? It's not like he had to fight Cambosis in his first pro fight. Like how insane would that be, right? But this guy's like pretty okay, right? And he's not even getting close to being hurt by this shot by the much faster, much more talented and explosive guy, right? Because the guy can see the punch coming from a mile away. And again, he's having trouble sneaking up on him with the right hand because the guy always knows when the right hand comes. But look at he's sneaky enough. He just landed a jab. Bah! Now watch the guy getting his guard up for the right hand. He's ready for the right hand. But getting on the line in this sequence here, he was not ready for the jab. 
And Cruz, because of the fact that he has to step with his jab every time, he's he doesn't have any punches he can sneak up on his opponent with. If he could throw a straight right hand in this position instead, or an overhand right, or even just a left hook, right? Some kind of power punch on the line without stepping, he could get a lot of value. But um, until he figures that out, he's not really going to be getting the knockouts that his talent level suggests. Okay, it's going to be too easy for his opponents to read his movement. Beautiful pull counter again. Down. Up. Okay, blasting him, controlling him here. Some really, really, really beautiful work in here. Boom, boom. Excellent, excellent shot. Again, you want to learn more about these types of pull counters. Down, up. Uh, check out the Felch Boxing Combat System. Teach you how to do it. And it's really cool because it's also got a bunch of my students that I teach. Um, and teaching them how to do all those drills. So there's a lot of ways for you to see a lot of different people kind of failing and growing in different, different parts and phases of the system. Uh, so you can kind of get from the beginning part to the end part or to the more advanced parts. Now, beautiful move here, right? Slipping to the front foot, front foot pull counter, boom, down, and then throwing a body shot. I thought that was a particularly cool move. And now again, why is he having such a difficult time following up and beating his opponents well he's going to enter the line here slip he's kind of getting tagged ah no big deal down body shot boom but look at how he has to follow this up he has to reset stepping jab stepping jab two okay and again he snuck up on him landed a power shot boom maybe it's blocked maybe it's not it's not it doesn't matter because eventually he's going to find a hole where he uses one of these techniques and finds a slot maybe he throws a right hand after boom remember last time he did a one two bop bop right get him but after that, he has a very, very difficult time sneaking up on this guy, right? Because he goes right back to the one, one, two, and you know the guy's seen it a million times. Now this is a very, very cool sequence here, right? Boom, boom, pull, excellent right hand, getting right on the front foot, defending it, pulling again, and then again pulling again, boom, moving into another shot. Just really, really sick sequence here. Pull, smack. Pull, right, down, up, down, gets his block up. I don't like that little pivot on the front foot. He moves right, but again, pulling this way, boom, right back on the line with another shot. Um, and again, pull counters are, you know, I don't want to say a last line of defense, right, but it's a very, very common way to kind of control the line. Um, you're going to move off it just for a second, then reattack your opponent and hopefully make your opponent pay for attacking you, right? Now, again, um, as your opponent gets better and better and more comfortable picking the rhythm and the timings, pull counter is going to be more dangerous as the fight goes on. Um, if they're too common, if they're too too prevalent, so early in the fight, pull counters are the way to go to to learn, right? But eventually, your opponent's going to look to take your pull counters away, and you really want to be mindful of when they start making those transitions. Um, yeah, but it's also a very, very, very common source of offense. I want to say very basic. Okay, now here we've got Cruz pull countering again, getting back on the line with the guy, controlling him here. Okay, and now he's on the inside looking for a hole. Boom, eats a shot, no big deal. Finds a hole finally, right hand, control, up, down, block. Blocking that shot, re entering the line with the 1 1 2 again. Again, very, very common source of offense for him. Right back into a block. Beautiful, beautiful rhythm and pace from him here. Just checking out all the ways that he's going to get off the line. Boom, smack him, get on the line, control him, all right? Here comes an attack from the guy, right? He's going to control him, bop, and now he's going to find his own hole. Boom, okay? Control, pull, down, up, counter, down, block, boom, interact, boom, boom, boom. Again, just very, very solid sequences here from uh, Cruz being able to interact with his opponent when his opponent exerts himself and throws a punch and then being able to follow him back and find offense. Um, again, uh, pretty high level stuff on average. Um, again, especially for his pro fight, this is a kind of fight is a big deal. Um, but he's going to need to learn how to um, control space with the rear hand. He's going to learn how to need to learn how to feint. He's going to need how to need to learn how to open up with other punches other than the jab and the one one two, right? Um, uh, obviously getting on the line and then pull countering into a right hand is brilliant. But he's going to need to be able to use that right hand to start his sequences as well. Um, or use his jab 
to draw his opponent into a pull counter, okay? Um, because right now he's only doing the one one two. He's not throwing a lot of jabs that are setups for his other moves. So he's got a few a few dots to connect, but so far it looks like this guy is the real deal, okay? It looks like he is the real deal, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fortunate for him to get in the the Ennis camp. Um, I want to say that uh, Stephen Fulton's in there. And I think he's going to lose to Inoue. The only caveat to that is Inoue is a smaller guy-ish, in theory. So maybe he can't stop him and Fulton can outspeed him. Because this guy's fast. Stephen Fulton's fast, right? And Inoue is not like a boxing genius. You know, like, he kind of does some two-foot punching well. Um, but the point that I want to make is that Inoue, or that, that Stephen Fulton is not learning to move his head. Right, and he's not learning how to punch hard either. And he's also in Ennis's camp. So um Ennis has a great example of what you might hope to achieve in that camp. Um uh but but I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to teach him because, you know, some of the footwork stuff that he has going on in here, you know, the way that he steps on walks on his legs and stuff is just kinda you know, it's interesting, you know, so um yeah, Bozy's going to have to teach this guy how to walk. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm pretty excited about this guy. I, w I definitely want to continue seeing him uh, improve. I don't want to miss any of his fights. Um, and this is going to be one of those guys that's going to be easy to miss one of his fights because he's probably going to be fighting, like, you know, once a month. <laughs> um, no, I don't know, actually. Did he get a title for this? Is he going to get a title in his next fight? So maybe he won't fight as often as I think he will. But um, anyway. Um, pretty great performance, you know, pretty great performance for his first fight. Um, yeah. Uh, 